This is the third video in a series about Leonardo da Vinci's two paintings, The Virgin of the Rocks, one in the National Gallery London and the other in the Louvre in Paris. The first video makes a comparison between the two pictures and proposes dates that are contrary to those usually accepted. It looks at the style comparative to each other and to Leonardo da Vinci's other known works. It looks at the three changes that were made between the two pictures, at the symbolism, particularly the symbolism in the Louvre painting, and suggests a probable patron for the painting now in the Louvre. The second video looks in detail at Leonardo's background and the commission for the painting in 1483 by the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception in Milan. The present video makes a comparison between the anatomical forms and suggests a way in which one painting was copied and reproduced. When looking at the painting in the National Gallery, it is clear that the body of the Virgin Mary in the painting The Virgin of the Rocks has a very solid and three-dimensional form. It conveys all the evidence of having been drawn from life or from a carefully composed study in which the anatomy of the figure was taken into account. In the National Gallery painting, the robes reveal and emphasise the solidity of the limbs underneath. The forms of the legs and the knees are clearly visible through the skirt. The knees are firmly placed on the rock surface and the garment crumples and drapes in a very natural way over the rock. There must have once existed a very detailed preparatory study for that figure, drawn on paper and long since lost. In the case of the Louvre painting of the Virgin of the Rocks, although the basic outlines of the figure are the same, there is no feeling of solid form under the garments. With the exception of the face and hands, there is no evidence that this figure was drawn from life or that there was ever an anatomical study for it. This figure looks as if its main outlines have been traced from the London painting, so that while the easily seen details, for example the yellow red edges of the robe and the diagonal fold of the skirt, remain in the same place, the sense of what lies beneath them has gone. The artist is not interested in himself in the solidity of the form as much as the overall effect. If indeed this painting, the one in the Louvre, lacking as it does the anatomical form and solidity, is the first one and the London painting is the copy, then the artist has achieved the almost impossible task of creating solid matter out of nothing. The case for the angel in the London painting preceding that in the Louvre painting is even stronger. The body of the angel in the London painting is clearly defined by its robes and once again has the appearance of having been drawn from life. The red cloak on the angel in the Louvre painting not only obscures but somewhat distorts the figure as if the folds of the robe had been arranged flat on the floor rather than wrapped around a living person. It is obvious that the angel in the Louvre painting could not have provided the model for the angel in the London painting but rather that it was the other way around. It is the Virgin of the Rocks in London that is true to the original concept and to some now lost detailed studies, almost certainly from life. It is the Louvre Virgin of the Rocks that is a copy of the London original. Moreover, it is clear that the Louvre painting has not been derived from a now long lost original drawing, but from tracing the painting that showed only the major forms and not the details because while almost everything that pertains to basic outline is identical, almost everything that pertains to detailed observation is different. The expressions of the faces, the hair, the rocky foreground, the plants, the angel's robe, the virgin's hand, and the folds of the yellow lining of the cloak. Further evidence that the bodies of the London painting were drawn from life and are therefore the originals are found in the positions of the angel and of St John the Baptist. In both pictures the angel kneels on the left knee and has the right knee raised to lean forward slightly 
with the left arm extended downwards and outwards to support the Christ child, who was quite dangerous near the edge of a rocky pool. In the London painting, the right hand of the angel can be seen with the wrist resting on her knee. In the Louvre painting, the right hand has been raised to point at John. This is the most major difference between the two paintings. Now, the London painting makes anatomical sense. That right wrist, which lies across the knee, gives support to the whole upper body and allows it to pivot on its axis the way it does. If you raise the arm, as in the Louvre painting, the angel will topple over like Brother Obadiah in the Victorian parlour game. The angel cannot support itself with the right hand raised the way it is in the painting in the Louvre. It is impossible to imagine that Leonardo started out with a model in a posture that could not be helped, as in the Louvre painting. It is impossible that he made this his prototype and then cleverly resolved the problem in the second picture. This does not happen. It is clear that the artist started out with a figure drawn from life, but once it had become a drawing on a two-dimensional surface, then any change is possible at the hand of the artist and the mechanics of the human body can be ignored. John the Baptist is a similar case. Like the angel in the Louvre painting, John has a little problem with balance. In the London painting, he leans on his crossed staff, his traditional emblem. It appears that this gilt cross was added later, along with halos. Were they added by Ambrogio de Pretis as part of this finishing of the work in order to get the payment? One thing is absolutely certain. They are part of the original design. When Leonardo got a little chubby boy to pose for him as a model for John Baptist, then that child posed with the staff, not without it, as he is shown in the Louvre painting. To have posed the child without the cross would have been to defy the laws of gravity. In the London painting, as the child leans forward, his weight is supported by the rod acting as a lever between the downward pressure of his arm and the upward thrust of his shoulder. Take away that rod and little John the Baptist is left leaning so far forward without support that in real life he would have fallen flat on his face. But again, once the figure had only a two-dimensional existence, any such changes, such as the removal of the staff, could be made. There is no way that the figure of John could first have been drawn without the cross, as in the Louvre painting. John's posture only makes anatomical and mechanical sense when the cross is there, as in the National Gallery painting. But in the realms of the magical painted surface, the existence of the staff makes no difference at all. In both these cases, the indications are that the National Gallery painting preceded that in the Louvre and that Leonardo, in painting the Louvre version, made the various changes. How then was the second painting done? In my opinion, Leonardo made a tracing of the existent work the London Virgin of the Rocks, and used it to create the second painting, the Louvre Virgin of the Rocks. The tracing would have indicated the shapes in a fairly clear outline, but would not reveal the details. The process of creating a picture from a detailed cartoon is a very different process to that of creating a picture from the tracing of a finished painting. A cartoon often contains details of anatomy which disappear in the finished painting but which give greater understanding and more points of reference for the artist in the creation of a convincing and lifelike work. The process of making a detailed cartoon by tracing an existent painting is much more difficult. In a tracing, once the tissue has been laid over the original, only the edges defining contrast in tone are clearly visible. This accounts for the fact that in these two artworks, the outline of the rocks against the light background, for example, is very similar indeed, but the painting details of the rocks are quite different and very much simplified in the second painting. The basic forms of drapery and the position of the figures were traceable, but the details of anatomy inside the garments were not. Leonardo was a master creator, he probably didn't even bother to sketch in the finer points. He simply reinvented them. 
the rocky background with the nebulous shapes and the dull tonality would have been hard to trace, so it was given a new structure. The background rocks were given the same form in the second painting because their outlines against the sky were clearly visible. Although the size of the lewd virgin of the rocks is a few centimetres larger than the London painting, the entire composition of figures is slightly smaller. This is very odd. The technique used by artists to enlarge or shrink a work is to divide a drawing into squares and increase or decrease the size. But in this instance, the reduction is very slight indeed and is not worth the effort of meticulously reducing every part by the same proportion, particularly since the panel in the Louvre painting is actually slightly larger. Therefore, the reduction must have happened by some natural and mechanical means, in the same way as a plaster cast is always a little smaller when the object is cast because of the shrinkage when the plaster dries. A solution to the question of how the reduction of the second painting occurred is that Leonardo traced the first painting onto a large piece of new linen gauze. But before the tracing was transferred to the new panel, the gauze shrank slightly. This reduced the total picture uniformly. And that is the key. Leonardo then adjusted the composition a little by moving the position of John somewhat and lengthening the Virgin's arm a bit so that it would still reach his shoulder. He also had more room to paint rocks and sky at the top. These points. The lack of anatomical detail, the different rope on the angel in the Louvre painting, the different position of the angel's hand so that the angel could no longer support itself mechanically, the missing staff in the Louvre painting so that little John will fall on his face if he's not very careful, and the slight shrinkage of the entire figurative composition all indicate to me that the painting in the Louvre was done from a tracing from the National Gallery picture and is therefore the second picture and not the original. It reinforces the fact that Leonardo's Virgin of the Rocks in the London National Gallery is a painting of unique importance in the history of Renaissance painting.